All right. So the first thing we need to do is to elevate our our permissions. And the reason why I want to do that is because a lot of the things that we want to do in, in the next little session is going to take uh, super user uh, privileges. So kind of like we did on the Mac earlier on, we're going to go sudo su. And what you will see is that the curse position changes from a dollar sign to a hash. Okay, don't worry about that. But essentially that is us now in as the root account. So things that you can do now can seriously affect your system. But essentially, we're going to need to be able to do that because we're going to install something. All right. So I'm going to just run some standard things. apt get is the... Um, what can we say? It's the sort of installer, uninstaller, the applications, all that kind of stuff. But it need, might need to update. So I'm going to say update. All right. And what update's going to do is it's going to refresh the list of where all the, uh, the downloadable files are. Now, we've just downloaded this from the internet. So this operating system should be pretty up to date. But interestingly, there can be um, some differences between the time that they, uh, the developers uploaded this software and now. And you can see as it goes through the, the system, it's busy reading all those packages in. Okay? And that's all it really does. Okay? I'm not going to issue the upgrade command because upgrade will upgrade it to the next version. But we just, as I said, just downloaded and installed this from the internet. So it will be already the latest version. Right, but once we updated our APT um, files, I'm going to now go and go apt get install, which is the install parameter, asterisk. Okay, and you can see it builds a list and a list of dependencies. Now here you will see the thing that is going to install asterisk configs. This is the additional packages over here. The configs, all the other things that it needs. Okay, the suggested packages, which it won't install, but it's just telling you anyway. There are some things which in later videos we are going to install these, but we're not going to install them right now. And in fact, in later videos, I'm probably going to show you how to install Asterisk when it's built from a from the source files, right? Right now, this is, let's say, the easy way, which is just to use apt-get and to install it without any dependencies or building. In later videos, we're actually going to build it from the developer source, okay? But right now, I don't think it's necessary and should give us everything that we need in order to get a sort of working little system. So the following packages will be installed. Asterisk, Asterisk config, core sounds, en. Yes, in this case, it's en. So it's making some assumptions that it's English, in fact, that we want to install. But that's fine. It's got all the dependencies that it needs. It's even going to install some MyriadDB stuff. We're not going to worry about that now. Uh, Socks, etc. It's fine. This list is fine. Just let it install it. It's not going to take up a huge amount. There you go. 45 megabytes to install. And so let's install it. Yes, enter. All right, and here we can see we have installed everything. Astros is in fact done. So Astros is a service. Remember earlier on we went to top, right? We can see again that these are the files that are running. Okay, there's asterisk over there. So user has been asterisk. Okay, and this is the uh, service that's running. So I'm going to quit that and I'm going to say service asterisk, okay, uh, status. 
all right, it's going to give me a status of asterisk. Asterisk PVX is running. There you go. This is our asterisk PVX. Okay. Now there are a lot of errors that it's that it is picked up over here. Okay. But don't worry about that. We're going to get to fix all of that. You can see asterisk ready, asterisk started. But how do we sort of get to work on asterisk? Well, we have to go into asterisk uh, CLI. Asterisk R. Now, asterisk R sort of basically means that we're going to go and remote into it. So I press enter and there we go. This is the Astra CLI. Now there's not much to it at the moment. Okay, it's just giving us the basic information. So this is Astra 16. Okay, the latest version of Astra. Okay, and this is going to give us a few command lines. So we could probably go and press tab. Now tab give us all the uh, features of asterisk. So I'm going to go sip space show show and something like peers. Right? Like no, I'm just going to say show, show peers. It's saying there are not extensions on this thing on this PBX. Alright, and then I'll type exit just to get out of the CLI and I've returned back to my command prompt. Then I can type exit to get back to my user. So if I want to go back to the asterisk environment and I'm not as a super user, I'm going to have to go sudo asterisk r and I get back. Exit takes me back. Right, so those are the two commands we're going to be using a lot. We're going to go back into asterisk and then exit. Now, all of asterisk works on config files. So, we're now going to go through some of the basic config files, which are here. So, cd, etc. Asterisk, press enter, and then I'm going to go ls minus l. And you can see all the config files over here. Right. There are a lot of config files that it's put in there. And we don't need half of them. So what we're going to do is we're going to go and clear all those out. But we need a good way of, well, sort of managing these files. There is an, uh, VI. Uh, there is Nano. There's a couple of things. But the truth is that... Uh, none of these give me the kind of user interaction that I really like. Um, I prefer to use something like Visual Studio Code. Now Visual Studio Code, that's this one over here. Visual Studio Code gives me a nice code colored uh, environment for me to open up files and uh, read them, etc. Except we don't have any way of opening up these files because they're on a remote terminal over here. They're separate. So we need a way to map a drive to this uh, Raspberry Pi so that we can open them up. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to install something called Samba. Now, Samba is a very old Linux program, and what it will do is it will allow us to mount over the network, which is how this computer is connected to us, a mount over a network a file sort of sharing uh, a service. And that will allow us to simply map a drive to our Raspberry Pi and double click and open the files without any restriction. So I'm going to go sudo. It's you back into the super user. I'm going to say apt get install and I'm going to install Samba. Oh, I've put a space. Okay, 
Do you want to install it? Yes. Now, Stamba installs and sets up a service for itself. There is only one file really that we need to do. Um, we need to set in order for us to create a network share. Okay, so there it is installed. Okay, and the one thing that we want to do is we want to make sure that our passwords are synchronized with our usernames, like for example the Raspberry Pi or the Pi username that we have on this computer. So I'm going to type SM, uh, SMB, Pi. let's just tab that, there you go, SMB password or PS or WD add, I basically add, want to add pi, right? That's our, uh, our password and then we have to, our username and that's what we have to type with the password is raspberry, okay, retype, raspberry, okay, ah, mismatch, sorry, let me do that again, raspberry, Go, that's a bit better. Added pi to Samba. So what we've done is we've added pi, the the uh, the current username, uh, to the SMB. Okay. Now we need to essentially edit the Samba config file. So I'm going to use nano, uh, and I'm going to say etc tab uh, Samba. Uh, there's another tab. SMB conf. All right. I use tab a lot just to know that to show that I am I know that that it is actually working on the correct uh, thing. So here you can see a lot of the uh, settings. I'm going to go down to the bottom of this file, uh, and a lot of this is commented out. It's just uh, instructions. You can see that there is a there's one for printers. We don't have to worry about that. Uh, we don't have to we can, we can, oops, and take that out. Okay, we don't have to worry about a printer and uh, more prints. Okay, we're not printer sharing. Uh, very nice of it, but no, we're not going to use it. Okay, uh, and at the bottom section over here, we're going to create ourselves a share. So we make it inside these square brackets, and we're going to say uh, innovate asterisks. Okay, innovate asterisk is our share, and over here we're going to say path. Well, you know what? I've actually got the whole lot over here, so I'm going to copy that from over here, and I'm going to paste it over here. Now, just read off the screen that and copy that information for yourself. It's basically saying path is to the root directory, browsable yes, writable yes, read only yes, no, create a mask, 755. In other words, when we create stuff using this Samba tool, what is the default uh, permissions that we give it? And of course, for the directory as well, the guest okay is no. So in other words, don't log in as a guest. Security is user, uh, write list. So this is the users that can <coughs> Can write and that essentially is our user pi and then the force user is a command that says okay even though we are logging in as pi we want to give ourselves root access because essentially a lot of the stuff we we're going to be working on with asterisk is going to be in the etc asterisk folder and that's going to need root access so we do that Control X to exit. Do you want to write it? Yes. Y for yes. Confirm file name. Enter. Now we can uh, restart the service. So service. Service. ICE service. S M. Uh, S M B D, which is the service. Restart. Okay. And now we should be able to access this computer through the network. So I'm going to back back onto my computer. I'm saying say go, connect to server, 
and I am going to type in SMB Raspberry Pi local, right? That is the device on the network. Okay, let add it, might as well. Uh, and I'm going to say connect, right? It now connects and it says, do you want to connect to a server? Yes. So let's put that in the middle there. Now it's saying, give me your username. Remember what we did? We said pi and raspberry. That is the username we want to connect with. Now it, here we go. Now it's offering you the uh, network name, which we said is innovate asterisk. And there you go. We are now connected. So, oops. So now through code, we can say, uh, let's just use that. So open folder. We can choose our Raspberry Pi network, innovate asterisk, and choose etc. Asterisk, there's asterisk. Uh, in fact, that is the folder that we want. Now, Visual Studio Code has got all of our config files in it, everything that we want.